Hey guys, it's Chris. From creatures of the sea to predators that can't get along in the same area. Join me as I reveal eight sets of animals that really, really hate each other. Number eight, crocodiles and hippos. On the surface, it may seem like this is a rather random pairing of animals to say hate each other. But in Africa, they meet more than you'd think. Hippos and crocodiles are both river dwellers in many respects, and they've been known to clash at times. What's more, both of them are some of the most aggressive creatures in all of Africa. Wait, hippos are aggressive, you might ask? Since when? Well, it's easy to think of hippos as nothing more than lovable lumps of creature, but they are indeed a creature you should be scared of. One hunter was actually trying to get one for his trophy case and didn't notice that a hippo was actually right under his canoe. Before he could do anything, the hippo flipped his boat, got him into the water, and then did what came naturally. Hippos are known to be so unpredictable, they'll actually attack loyal friends. Like one South African man who had a hippo as a pet, and then it turned on him. There are also several cases of river tours being disrupted by hippopotamus, despite them not being disturbed in the slightest. As for crocodiles, you've no doubt heard the variety of stories about them going at it with all sorts of creatures, including humans. They're peak predators and love to ambush prey so they can't escape. But just as important, they like to show their dominance, which is one of the reasons they're so aggressive, especially during the mating season. They'll go all out to impress mates by showing their raw power. They'll even go after lions and water buffalo just to show off their skills. This makes them unpredictable at times and very deadly. In terms of who wins the battle of these river monsters, that would be the hippo more times than not. Their mass makes it difficult to take them down, especially with the crocodile being an ambush predator and not really a fighter in long bouts. Plus, while crocodiles do attack humans hundreds of times a year, hippos have been known to race towards them at speeds over 20 miles an hour for the smallest of reasons. Hippos and crocs don't clash often, but their hate for one another is strong because each of them feel they're the dominant force in the water. Number 7. Sharks and Dolphins In the waters of the world, there are many battles between predators and prey. There are some creatures that go beyond the call to ensure that certain predators don't get what they want. To that end, arguably the greatest rivalry that's going on in the oceans right now is that of the shark versus the dolphin. If you've seen various movies or TV shows, you'll likely know the stories of how dolphins are one of the only deterrents when it comes to sharks. Which is weird, because when you think about the size and power of sharks, the only thing that matches up to them in many ways are whales. But with dolphins, it's not a battle of strength, it's a battle of minds. Dolphins are incredibly intelligent creatures. Not just that though, they're ones who are willing to go beyond the call to defend those they feel are worthy of their attention. And this is why there are numerous stories of people telling tales of how dolphins saved them from shark attacks, including one time a whole pod of dolphins swam around a group of lifeguards in an attempt to stave off a shark attack. And it worked! Dolphins and sharks don't just clash around humans though, they do battle in the water. The dolphin is a lot tougher than most people give it credit for, including having a nose that is likened to a battering ram, and it'll use it with its incredible speed and do serious damage to a shark. So in many ways, sharks and dolphins hate each other for various reasons. Sharks hate dolphins because they keep them from their prey at points, and dolphins hate them because of their nature and how they harm others. And if you're still in doubt as to whether sharks really fear or hate dolphins, the Mythbusters went to Africa to do some tests, and a fake dolphin was used against the sharks in terms of letting them know a dolphin was around. And every time they brought their fake dolphin in, the sharks fled. So in this battle of the sea creatures, it's clear that Flipper wins. Number 6. Lions and Hyenas The rivalry between lions and hyenas are so legendary that it was very beautifully depicted in the hit Disney movie The Lion King, where they weren't just enemies, they were two groups that wanted nothing more than to be dominant over the other. But what might surprise you though is just how true this rivalry is, and at times it's one of the most deadly rivalries in the world today. If you were to glance at these two combatants, you might see a major problem with this rivalry. Mainly, lions are the king of the jungle, they're big and huge, and have one of the most powerful bites in the world. So how is it that such a beast could lose to something weaker like a hyena? And the answer to that is that you're thinking about it in the wrong way. 
just like various armies have lost throughout history despite being stronger or having bigger numbers, like the Battle of 300 is a great example of this, the hyenas do have various advantages over lions. Mainly, they're more numerous, and they're not afraid to attack a singular lion with a massive pack to ensure they get their licks in and cause all sorts of trouble for the lion. Lions still win most times because they're endurant creatures with incredible strength, but hyenas have gotten some victories of their own. But why are they such rivals? Well, that would be because they're predators who go after the same prey. They both live in Africa in the same spaces, attack in both the day and the night, and have groups that have their backs. These similarities lead to conflicts, and at times, wars. In Ethiopia one time in 1999, 35 hyenas and 6 lions died in a two-week war that went on in the desert. Their hatred for one another is so strong that they'll kill each other's cubs just to screw with the population numbers of their rivals. Number 5. Ants in the world today, there are over 16,000 different species of ant. And if you want to put a pure number on the population of all the ants in the world, it would be well over 10,000 trillion. Given all of this, you might think that ants as a whole would get along. If for no other reason than because they're all ants and have similar bodies and abilities. In fact, ants going after other ants is one of the most long-standing rivalries and hatred in the world today. But their rivalry and hate for one another can honestly be explained in the most basic of ways. On the one hand, because there are so many ants in the world today, it's nearly impossible for them not to run into one another. Not to mention that while there are various species of ants, many of them do eat the same things, like leaves or certain fruits, and even use the same kinds of materials in order to build up their colonies. Which brings us to the other problem with them. Mainly, they're known for being very distinct social animals. So why does that matter? Think about it in a grander nature sense. You were one of these ants, and you were raised your whole life to understand a certain role and a certain way of doing things via the organization of your home. Then all of a sudden, another race of ants is seen in your territory. What would your first reaction be? Exactly, you'd think they were invaders trying to hurt your colony. Thus, most times ants meet other ants from another species or even another colony, they attack one another. What's more, they're not afraid to get very creative in how they do this, including having various forms of soldier ants and army ants do most of the attacking, and then having the rest of the ants swarm the others in order to rip them limb from limb. This is also the technique they use for fighting off various other species of animal that try and harm their colony, including certain species being so aggressive that they'll take on any other animal no matter their size. But regardless of that, when it comes to these ant wars, they can be quite big and quite deadly. Number 4. Bees and Hornets Another unlikely rivalry you might not know about or understand is the battle that goes on between bees and hornets. On the surface, this is one that's a bit perplexing, as bees and hornets have all sorts of similarities, and are oftentimes mistaken for one another by humans looking at their sometimes massive nests. But in truth, their hatred is far more deep and it's largely due to the hornets themselves. You see, when a hornet builds its massive nest, it's comprised of various things that are high in sugar, which means that when it needs to collect these items, it'll go for things like dead fruits, certain other food items, and bees. You see, there's a liquid within a bee that comes out when the bee is killed. Because the hornets know this, they go and invade the bee territory all the time so they can get that liquid for their homes. In Japan, the Japanese giant hornet is so strong and powerful in terms of its killing potential that a single one of them could kill dozens of Japanese bees which obviously makes the bees very mad, because their hives are built upon and expanded through all the bees within it. If many dozens die, it hurts the hive. Because of this, human beekeepers have to do various things to ensure that hornets don't come in and hurt them in any way. They set traps for the hornets to ensure they can't get in. But the bees aren't harmless on their own, far from it in fact. When it comes to the Japanese bees, they've evolved in such a way to kill off hornets on their own. What they'll do is when they can sense that a hornet is in their area, they'll gather up a bunch of their fellow bees and swarm the hornet. But not to attack it, but rather to flap their wings around it. They'll do it with such speed and intensity that they'll raise the temperature of the area around the hornet in order to kill it from literally being cooked alive. Number 3. Meerkats and Drango Birds In Africa, the meerkat has gotten quite a reputation thanks to movies like The Lion King and TV shows like Meerkat Manor. 
They're seen as rather adorable creatures and are very social ones too, which is all true in their own right. And like the Lion King has suggested, they are indeed beings that love to eat bugs and other slimy yet satisfying creatures. But also in Africa are the Drango birds, who aren't too pleased with the meerkats taking a lot of the food they like to eat. Now, unlike various other rivalries, these two species rarely ever fight head on. But the Drango birds do indeed have a way to scare off the meerkats using psychological warfare. You see, while meerkats have numbers, they don't have a lot of power in their small bodies. And that makes them the perfect prey for a wide array of creatures. And the Drango birds, well, they know this and they're actually able to mimic the sounds of these various other creatures. By doing this, they allow the meerkat to think that a deadly foe is nearby. Then they'll drop any and all food they've dug up or killed and just bolt. This leaves the Drango birds to the spoils of war, and thus they get food for doing minimal effort. This was even captured on nature documentaries, showing just how effective a tool this can be, as well as the reactions of the meerkats when they realize they'd been duped. Number 2. Orcas and Seals If you ever head out to the wider ocean and look on certain land masses, be solid land or a massive pack of ice, you'll sometimes notice seals are just standing there, doing nothing but making noises and watching out for things in the water. This is intentional, because seals know that their deadliest predator is just below the surface waiting to eat them, the orca whale. Orcas are also known as killer whales and for good reason. They're known to use very advanced strategies to get their prey whether it be seals, sea lions, or any other variation of the creature. If seals are in the water, which they love to be in, they're in danger of being attacked by a whale. Even on land or on ice, they're not safe. The whales will notice them, then coordinate attacks with their pod in order to ensure that the seal makes a mistake and then it eats them. Given this, it's no wonder that seals hate orcas. There are even times when other whales will stop the orcas from getting the seals so they can escape. Number 1. Dogs and Cats Without a doubt, the greatest rivalry in the history of the animal kingdom is that of dogs and cats. A rivalry so documented and talked about that it's been the focus of various movies, TV shows, comedy gags, and more. But let's answer the deep question. Do cats and dogs honestly hate each other? Well, yes, and also no. Originally, when the descendants of wolves became domesticated, their initial training was to hunt smaller animals, which would include cats. This kind of genetic tutoring, if you will, has made a very long rivalry for both dogs and cats. As time went on, the two started to hate each other in different ways, including stray dogs and cats battling each other over food and places to live. There's also the question and problem of personality conflicts. It's not hard to see that dogs and cats act very differently. Cats are more than fine with being alone all day, while dogs seek companionship from either their owners or other animals. Furthermore, most dogs vastly outpace cats when it comes to energy, so to the eyes of cats, they're seeing a manic creature just running around, while the dog sees a judging animal that likely thinks it's better than it. However, as many pet owners will know, dogs and cats can get along if raised properly. In the case of dogs, if you raise them alongside a cat from puppyhood, they'll have no genetic inclination to attack them because they're just part of the family. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these creatures who had bad blood for one another? Which of these rivalries did you think is the most intense or brutal? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to Worldlist, and I'll see you next time on the channel.